Again, we gathered here. We thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you for your tender mercy. Okay. We thank you, O oh God, for the blessings that you promised to give us. Okay. If you say no if we dwell in unity. Bless this hour. Yes, sir. Let your anointing be upon this hour. Yes, thank you for calling the kids together from the north, from the south, from the east, from the west. Red, yellow, black, and white. We are precious in your sight. Thank you, God, Democrat, Republican, the, the poor, the learned, the unlearned, are welcome at your table. Now, Lord, we pray that the words of our mouth and the meditations of our hearts would be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Yes, these blessings. Jesus name us say A B C D E F G the liquor man <laughs> don't bring out no liquor get the bottle out of my office it's ain't got no labels on it the A B C alcohol control man <laughs> Need a little protection this morning. The ABC manager. Amen. Glad to see Judge. The judge is back in the seat. I don't know where he was last week. But uh, Amen. Judge is back. I'm so glad to see each and every one of you, brother. Right now. Yeah. Amen. Glad to see you. This is our senior citizen each year. And uh, we got a new little brother and a new little sister. Amen. Brandis. And they've come to the table uh, this morning. So let me start on this side. Is any first? Well, let's start on this side. First time, just stand and um, tell us your name. And, uh, um, What's your name again? Martell Hardwick. Martell. Okay, yes, ma'am. <laughs> okay. All right. We well, always see David. Everybody on this side. So let's move on this side. Our first time, brother. Let's go with my my, my younger brother here. My name is Chris Davis. I'm a community artist. Uh, first on the national day. Uh, all right, we're going to be here more about you. And then, amen, my little granddaughter. I ain't seen her since she was 12. Amen. Tell us your name. Okay. Freedom Healthcare. My name is Okay. Thank you so much. I got the community police uh, uh, officer. He has not missed uh, reporting for the last two years. I'm talking about none other than our very own brother Bradley, Officer Bradley. And he says, I love y'all. It can't nothing y'all can do about it. I'm in training. And uh, uh, he wants us to know that his heart is with us uh, this morning. All right, uh, let me start by saying to Sister Stella uh, from the Inspector General, uh, Brother Harvest Hawk, what's his name, Hawkins? Uh, he definitely let us know and let the table know he appreciated us being at the meetings that he has had. And he really, really appreciate the uh, input and the support that we are given the Inspector General's uh, office. All right. Happy
had a great time at the mayor's night out. Had an opportunity to see our, um, our chief. Uh, she was looking good. And uh, Nick, she definitely Nick, asked Nick. Bishop. Are we represented every week? And I said, there's not been a week past that the local police department has not been here. And then I've seen your boss, uh, Brother Miller. And he said, Bishop, uh, Brother Hollis, and Mike Zane, I said, every week, if they're not here, there are some officers. And uh, this is what it's going to take. Brother Maxwell, Nick, how you doing? Thank you. Yeah, all right, good to see you. All right. Okay, let us begin, I guess, by getting a um, little up to date from Lieutenant uh, Hollis. Y'all do know that we had several murders night before last. Uh, we know of two one at 26 and Chestnut, and one up at 10th and Broadway. Uh, this morning, on my way home from a radio show, uh, there was a killing at Das Um You know, so it's all around. But we definitely are glad that we are still working together. And one of the things that helps us at the table is that we're not afraid to admit what the police did for so long, they would not admit. And that's why the DNJ came. And they had to admit that there has been some problems. But what makes it nice, not only have we at the table admit that there's, it's, it's a mess. Number two, we are at the table willing to submit for so long. We were not willing, even if we found out that we were wrong, we are not going to submit. So now I see that there is a willingness on both parts uh, to submit to one another. Okay? And that's helping to bring a little piece back. And then number three, at the bishop's table, there is a commitment. So we have admitted the problems. We're learning to submit to one another. And number three, we have asked each one of you, as you all have done for two and a half years, every Friday, we only miss because we miss one Friday okay. that we didn't meet. And that's comes from Weatherman saying, don't nobody move. Uh, but we are committed to the table. So I know that I will have to go march down in front of the police chief. Because I know every Friday, I'm going to see a lieutenant. I'm going to see a sergeant. I'm going to see an officer at the bishop's table. So one of my concerns is I can hold it. And if I can hold it, I can say, Hollis, this is the bishop. Uh, I can tell mama, mama, call and ask for Hollis and tell him. So you all, that commitment that we know we're going to see. I know I'm going to see a rich man. See that guy, the blue man? Yeah, yeah. Very, raise your hand there. Yeah, he, yeah. I know I'm going to see him. I'm going to see I can get $5 every Friday. <laughs> All right. Uh, where am I at? Who was that? Oh, how is you supposed to be giving them, taking the mic? <laughs> I'm going to put on the bus. If anyone lost a pair of glasses. But uh, it's been a tough week in the community. Uh, as you all know, you see on the news, um, you know anything or hear it or put anything that uh, could do okay. uh, some information that will give us the uh, 5740 tip line. In regards to the second division, we're still having the auto thefts, and um, that's really ongoing battle that we're going with. We're doing the best we can control wise. We're trying to work um, with the test we're trying to find out who's doing that. We know a lot of juveniles are doing it, but uh, the main thing is trying to catch up. So um, I'm holding on to the truth. That's really all I have. If you all have any concerns, uh, please bring it to me. I'll try to get some for you. If not, I'll point you in the direction. 
Just reminding everybody about National Night Out. It's going to be uh, at Kroger again, 28 uh, August 1st. Yes, uh, their, their Excel Center is on Thurston Highway. Uh, it is, uh, it's off, like right around Guardian Angels. It's on Preston, uh, in between. Uh, yeah, it's what we call Big Lodge used to be. It's right in between uh, Indian Trail and Park uh, Valley Road. So, and uh, I believe they even provide transportation, so they definitely provide jobs. So put, put the word out there if anybody needs some further transportation. Okay, you may be able to have us. I'm going to, I'm going to a political thing with you. You may or not. The mayor now that in 30 days or so, he's going to decide who's going to be chief. We've only looked at, we only know about one. I don't know if you know, are there any other um, that we have considered that he says he's going to let us know? Here's what I'm going to tell you about it. Okay. Uh, I know they did a national survey. Yeah, okay. I have 1,000% confidence in the chief we currently have. Uh, I have 100% confidence in her. I like her 100%. Uh, she's involved in the community. She's involved with the department. Uh, she has all of her command staff to respect. Uh, she's a woman of God. Uh, and she cares. It's going to be hard for me, just me personally, to find someone more qualified than her. So I'm just going to put that out there. So uh, I don't have a vote in it, so, but I know how much confidence I have in her. We are going to work with her. We schedule is so full. But um, now she was at she was at the mayor's night out. She yeah. does go to a lot of events. Yeah. I will try and get her here. It's just her schedule is so full. It, it, yes. I'm going to I'm going to pass that. I, I will pass that message along. I know uh, uh, she was at the uh, uh, Father's Day march with uh, at the peace walk with Reverend Elliot. She does get out to as much stuff as she possibly can. Like I said, she's got my support 100%. Okay. I had a chance to talk to the chief. I had my support. And what I am going to do, I am going to call the mayor's office and let them know that's who I want. And if that's who we can get in, that's who we want. We need to step up to the plate for ourselves and let's stop telling people. Tell us what we need. We need to tell them what we want. I'm going to call the mayor's office and tell them I want to go to my team. And that's the answer. That's the best you want. Call the mayor's office. Call the mayor's office with that call. Okay, who, who is going to make the, the mayor makes the final decision? Is there any other idea? Anybody else? Yes, sir. Uh, Mayor, 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 the name of three finalists in the mayor. Okay. Uh, are those three names going to be presented to the public? The three names, the three finalists. I don't know how they're going to Well, probably we do need to be uh, looking at the, uh, getting the information so that we can get the back in. Uh, if there are others, we need to be at least able to see the other if there are others we need to at least be able to see who they are picking from and I uh, think that the community ought to have a part in that selection of whoever it is we ought to have a part in it and uh, maybe we might be talking around people but that information needs to get to the mayor yeah, yeah. Maybe about uh, four months ago, somewhere around there, I don't know, there was uh, there was a Zoom call that went out, and uh, I forget the guy's name and that, uh, or the name of the organization that was handling it. Administration or just that specific room, but they were uh, reaching out to the community to ask, um, what would you like?
you look for in a yeah, change yeah, like that. But, yeah. You know, in a, in a city in a, of uh, 650 plus thousand people, there was, there was 15 people on it. Maybe 10, maybe somewhere around there. I don't know. But I, I don't know how much they're considering that. But then uh, the choice for police chief, but, uh, you know, 650 plus thousand, 15 ratio of that as relates to community input, it just, you know, it's in balance a little bit. But uh, I, I, I don't know if that's. The, obviously, the, probably not the only criteria of searching for the police chief and getting community input. I don't know, but uh, I, want, I do wonder where they are. They being the organization that was uh, put in place to search for the police chief are in that process, and where Gwen Villarreal is in the uh, I don't know in that process too. But I don't know. That's my input. I'm going to sit down now. Talk to you later. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, all of these applicants have had their application in five last month. So I was assuming they're going to be Okay. Uh, okay, thank you. Yes. How has that information gotten out to the to the community about that meeting that you talked that Zoom meeting? How is that information distributed with only a short uh, a small amount of people being on there? It could not have been distributed in the masses because when you hear something, you say something. So if you received an email, that should have went out to all of your peers as well. Let me just give a disclaimer. The amount of marketing that I saw with my own eyes, which doesn't say a lot, but um, it's on our website. And uh, I think that was about it. And, and then it was mentioned, uh, uh, was it mentioned at the first time? That's right, that's right, WHS 11. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, as far as the survey that they were asked, what you would like to see in the chief chief of police, there was a hard copy that was passed out, and also on all the TV stations. Uh, they uh, uh, they told people the news media told the folks, the community that there was a survey, and they told you had to get on the survey. I went on the survey, and it was a certain amount of time that you had to do the survey. And the survey was over with, folks. According to the news media, only 1,200 people out of 600. Out of in the city of Louisville did the survey. It's more than that in the black community. So what we what we might get is what we gonna get is why these called we never step up in the place. Twelve hundred people out of the whole city of Metro that's ludicrous. And we cry about who we want and who we don't want and we get to step up to the plate. Okay. Yeah, brothers, brother Eddie. Mike Jack. Uh, my concern is policy. Uh, we know about the, the recent shooting that took place at the gas station. My question is, where was the armed guard? Because there was normally a normal armed guard that works that killing station. I know for a fact. Also, the, uh, the devices that they're using at Kroger's and uh, Walgreens that has cameras and they're jacked up in the air and they'll talk to you. If you well, the one that's down the street from me at Wayne Supply, if you get too close to them, they'll talk to you. My concern is we have a high crime spot, like that gas station because they had more than one incident. Why don't they have that same surveillance equipment that's being used at the Kroger's, Walgreens, and some other spots? I'm surprised they don't have one of Dino's, especially at nighttime. I mean, it's, it's, they seem to be working. Okay. They seem to be a deterrent to crime. Okay, I appreciate that, and that's one of the, uh, I will. Uh, I'm very close to uh, Dino's and uh, uh, always pointing 
but I think that's a good one. Uh, I'm afraid that uh, if they can, if that's something, uh, Colonel Hill, that's something that's possible. Uh, it's something we need to bring at the table. Uh, these, 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 anywhere there's a hot spot. I think it's one of the Hemlock. Do you have one of the Hemlock, Lieutenant? Yes. Okay. Okay. All right, y'all, we got, we got to move on. Let me move on because I got my is uh, why she's walking. She need to tell us, is there a problem with y'all, uh, the boyfriend and girlfriend? It looks like this guy ain't going to be telling. Talk to us. Well, you said it earlier, so I'm going to say it for you again. It's <laughs> <laughs> So I am not the person she to write that right. question to. But I will say this. Right. As far as the office, we're doing what we can to bring harmony. I do believe, and I know personally, because I am friends of officers. And so I do know that we're trying to work together. I know I do. And I have a lot of respect for officers. And I take that because in order to get respect, you got to give respect. And so I don't know where the shakeup is. All I'm going to tell you is, let's just work together. Good. I got to move to human relations. I got to get my report there. We're going to human relations. Thank you all for participating here yeah, it was. Okay, let's hear from our governor, DeVoy. You have missed, uh, are you still ready for governor? Uh, you turn it over to Daddy. But, uh, Daniel Cameron is qualified for that position. I believe that he's going to have the heart of God. I believe he's going to put Kentucky first. And those things right there, I fought for the, the idea of putting Kentucky first. I put in almost $17,000 of my own money into the campaign. And that's a lot of money when it comes out of your own pocket. It hurts. Okay? <laughs> the point of the matter is that now we have an opportunity to put a real leader in that position. Just like what we have here today, we're trying to focus on who's going to be the chief of police. I, I want to support her because she puts us first and have God in her heart, and we need to have an individual just like that in the governorship. All right, put your hearing aids, your, your listening aids on. This is a very important lesson. I don't know whether you have been paying attention to the media, but the decision came down from the Supreme Court that affirmative action that is operated with colleges and universities can no longer take race into consideration when an applicant applies to a higher school of learning uh, to be a student at a college of higher learning. That is a major setback for civil rights and human rights. Wake up, folks. Yes, okay, if they could do that, they can pretty much hand down another ruling on voting rights, the Voting Rights Act. They've already gutted that. If we lose our voting rights, folks, we lose. Now, I know some folks in the House want to say, well, I don't vote because voting doesn't do anything for me. That's a lie. Because every time somebody votes, it benefits you in some shape, form, or fashion. Now, why am I saying this? The 60th anniversary of the commemoration of the continuation of the historic march on Washington. If it wasn't for that historic march on Washington, you wouldn't have the voting rights that you have today. You understand? And so this march on Washington 
is very important. I was on the national call last night, and they are expecting us to be there because we are under a consent decree. We have issues in civil rights, human rights, every right you can think of, affirmative action, so forth and so on. Okay, and so we need a list today, a final list of at least 50 to 54 people who are intentional, not thinking about it, not hemming and on, that's going to get on the bus on August 25th to go to, to attend the March on Washington. We will also entertain, after this meeting, folks that are driving on their own and may need some hotel accommodations. I know that issue is going to be addressed as well. And so today I need that list because I've got to send it to the National Office in New York in consideration of a bus that we're going to take and all the names need to be listed on the list. Yes, question. Question, Maxwell. Where's the mic? It's very important. Okay. I hear that the bus is going to be a turnaround bus, yeah? It's going to be a turnaround bus. Uh, I don't know how much it would cost, but... Uh, turnaround bus is some, uh, some of the, you get up there, you go to the event, you do the event, you come right back. You turn, you turn around. Okay. <laughs> Okay, let me explain the turnaround. We would leave that Friday, which is August the 25th, around 5 o'clock p.m., so we can have a comfortable and leisurely drive ride to Washington, D.C. That means stopping somewhere, having dinner, rest stops, so forth and so on. We need to arrive in Washington, D.C., I would say no later than 7 a.m., because we're, because we're going to have to park where they have a designated area on Independence Avenue for the buses to park. All right? We will have to purchase our own permit. It's going to be very chaotic in Washington, D.C. on that day. So and then we will return late that Saturday night. We will leave Washington, D.C. after the rally, after the march, at 6 p.m. It's a 10-hour drive to the man. And we will get back to Louisville late that night or early Sunday morning, whichever comes first. So I need you all to sign in today so that I can turn in, we already have some names already, but so I can turn in the list of names to the national office. They got on us about that last night on the phone call. All right, this is very important. They want us there. How many is gonna go? No justice. No justice. No, peace. no justice. No peace. And we want young people to go. Okay. So get with me after the meeting so I can get your name on the list, so I can uh, email the list to the national office. And don't forget about Grandmaster Jay. If you want information on how to send letters to him and also letters to President Biden on his behalf about commuting his sentence. See me after the meeting as well. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, we budgeted, trying to budget uh, $100 uh, person. So you got a month or so. We're trying to keep it at $100 per person. And uh, we have some new buses. Uh, we already, those of you that went to Washington last week, was on one of my buses. Um, anybody went to Washington last week? You didn't? All right. Uh, okay. Did you? How about you? Did you didn't go with Shamika? Shamika, I sent a bus. Oh okay, yeah. Okay. I don't know why Shamika. Shamika had a group to go. Okay. Okay. Shamika had a group. Yeah. Did you know about? I have a question. I have a question for the yeah. officer. I was wondering. Uh, is it an ordinance on shooting fireworks like at four or five o'clock in the morning? Because like the, my neighbor, she's an older woman, and the guys on our, you know, I was young, but man, they shot fireworks all night to about five this morning, and bombs, man, and lady was complaining this morning about not getting no sleep. Is it an ordinance on what time you can quit shooting fireworks? 
Hey, uh, let's go get daddy. Y'all have to be when the when the when the when the Pope come in, the bishop sitting in there. So when the Pope has come in, let's give him a hand. Pastor Charles Elliott. This is the daddy of us all, Chris. This is the daddy. This is the daddy of us all. Pastor Charles uh, Elliott. I am what I am. Uh, because he is what laid his hands on me. So for him to even come, it's uh, a privilege. And uh, we're going to give him those last few minutes. Um, tell us about the, the fireworks so we don't know about shooting fireworks. Uh, yeah, I don't know particulars of the police, uh, the fireworks ordinance, uh, but there is a noise ordinance. Okay. Uh, they're shooting at 5 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, it was up at 4.35. Uh, I'll research it for you. Okay. I'll repeat it again so we can hear you. Uh, yeah, basically, if it shoots way up in the air, it's like they don't want to, uh, it's, a, or it's governed under the uh, Metro Code Ordinance 9440. Okay. But uh, I'll research it when we get together. And I'll, okay. I'll I appreciate it. I just want to, I just want to let her know because she was complaining this morning when I left out the door, and I just want to let her know, you know, what she can do about it. All right. Appreciate it. Okay, thank you so much. Yes, sir. Uh, very quickly, I want to echo on what Ms. Parker said about, about the voting rights. Uh, everybody in here, your your nieces, nephews, uh, sons, daughters, have got to get them out to vote. Encourage them to do that. Now, I'm a coach at Central High School, and I want to get to the Chickasaw Park shooting because it made national news. And that was our home base. We had some schools cancel our games because we don't want to go to Chickasaw Park. But I've been working with uh, Lieutenant Hollis. We've got cameras up down there now. We've got brand new lights on the tennis courts. They're putting in a $3 million pond project. So we're not having that mess down at Chickasaw Park. I've been volunteering there for 17 years, OK? taking care of the most beautiful tennis courts in this region, clay courts that are free to play on. So, welcome back to Chickasaw Park for those of you who were leery of coming, because at one time, black folks, was the, it was the only park you could go to, okay? So, welcome back to Chickasaw Park. We're not having that mess. If, if anybody comes in there and violates things, you're going to be on camera and you're going to be caught. Thanks to the Louisville Police and the and City of Louisville. Thank y'all for being so quick on this. Uh, let's, uh, before I get Daddy, uh, is this our chaplain? Uh, little, little sisters, come around now. Right, are you, uh, you want to say anything? Is this your first time? Yes. Yeah, step up and introduce yourself to the family. I'm uh, so glad to uh, have you to be here with us. Y'all get ready for the offer to Daddy's going to do that. Okay. Hi, my name is Natalia Humble. I'm a chaplain for the police department. Um, I'm a person who really loves to help people, and it's my passion, my calling. Anybody need me, I'm here. Um, I um, also, like for Pastor Bob Rogers, Evangel World Press Center, I just got ordained last year. Uh, when people call me and they need prayer, uh, when he's on borderline, I usually pray. Um, I go to prisons all around the world to speak. Um, the thing I do is serve the Lord. And, you know, I'm here to, I, I can't stand all the way out of my um, And I came and preached um, some Sunday with Bishop Lyon. Um, I just love So if y'all need me, I'm here. I don't need to change this city, make a difference, come together in unity. Mm. Okay. Thanks so much. Hey, Chris, uh, before Danny, you want to, anything special you want to tell us that you want to do for the community, our Southern uh, Bank? Uh, tell us where you're located. I know he's, uh, come on up to the, to the mic and tell us uh, this is his first time in He's from the Southern. First Southern National. First Southern. Okay. Okay. 
first on the National Bank, we're based out of Stanford, Kentucky, and I've been in the community uh, for about two years. Most of what I'm doing right now is a financial discipleship uh, curriculum, partnering with nonprofits and churches to uh, bring that curriculum to them so that they can change the, the culture of financial education in their ministry. Nonprofit, whatever that looks like. That's what we're doing right now. And again, being here and observing and hearing what's going on in the community. Because any organization that comes in can't come in and immediately try to change things, have to figure out the strategic route of how we can best help our community. So it's been a lot of observation for me. And thank you guys for allowing me to come in and hear what's important to you in this time. And, uh, and so I'm just listening, listening to you. Right? Okay, hope you be committed uh, to, as much as you can come uh, uh, to, the, to the table. Okay, Brother Dave's been trying to get to the, to, to the mic. Um, and then we got to get Daddy to uh, give us an air where that to have space. Because we still going to go to our breakout session at 10. We'll go straight to each other. All right. Okay, Dave. Yeah, I'm with the American Country League. Conference. We have a uh, third breakfast coming up uh, seven days. That's uh, on um, Saturday, July the 8th. It will be uh, at the Grange, uh, in the Grange at the uh, Life Church. Uh, and uh, uh, we want to be able to rebuild the family before the community. Uh, Second Chronicle says that if, uh, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and come Keep my face and pray like that. So we, if America wants to stop the violence and that they have to be able to return back to God. Amen. So this is what it's all about. I uh, invite you to come. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, Sister Betty. Okay. That's I I know I do. Yeah. Uh, hello, everybody. I am going to ask Bishop to pray over the water so we can have some holy water. And I'm, I have some cups, and when you leave today, if you get a cup of holy water and sprinkle on the streets and in front of the houses and ask God's anointing for safety, peace, love, and unity over each street, especially during the sports of July air uh, time when people would be partying and drinking and whatever else. So I'm asking everyone to help pray over our community for safety. And uh, at the end, either uh, Reverend Elliot and Bishop, if you will pray and anoint this water, that we can use it for our holy water and pray for peace and safety in our community. Thank you. God bless you. Sure, and I am excited and grateful to be with you. I've got to run because of I've got a feeling at the church. But I'm excited to see all of you all here. We're living in some very difficult times. God said it was going to happen. Uh, before I go, I want to give $50 to the movement. Uh, let me I'll kind of share with you all what the main thing is in this day and time. And that is Jesus voting. When you vote, get all of you young people to go out and vote. That makes the difference. It doesn't follow them for us to talk and have meetings. But if you want your elected officials to respect you, follow the Joshua and getting people out to vote. This is coming from 62 years of sharing. The only time the elected officials pay you in attention is when you got a group of folks that will go out and reddish people to vote. And when they vote, when you get them to vote, the elected officials will give you their sale number. I got the governor, I got the mayor, I got all of the sale number because I'm having the Jesus movement is to reddish people to vote. There are many young people, the colleges and whatnot, you'll be able 
I told Mac down to go out there and get somebody to take leadership. And let's get all of these young men who have had problems. Now they done got their voting right back. Let's get them to vote. And once they vote, if they find out who it is that have organized of people to go out to vote, they respect you. They don't care about you talking about the crime. They don't care about you doing that. But when you go to vote them in and vote them out, that's what makes the difference. Jesus and vote have a job. That will solve the problem. But I is so proud to see all of you here. I was looking at the police and all of them here. I'm one of those who lived in a time when it was the police that beat us. Not only kill us, but beat us because of the fact they didn't like it because we were uniting ourselves together. But Dr. King says, if you unite your forces together and vote, then he got to talking about economic. Economic. And that's when the power structure killed them. But you all now have the privilege now. I lived in Wheeler, Alabama, when you couldn't vote if you were black. We had to march and protest. Never we'll forget when I organized a group to work at Ford Gun and whatnot to get out to vote. We put Stanberry. Didn't nobody know nothing about Stanberry. They were so sure that he wasn't going to win. But the voters went out and voted for him. We got a Joshua here. I done got across the Red Sea. But brothers and sisters, when y'all keep meeting like you're doing now, uniting your faces together, don't worry so much about the public action. It, we, 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 we'll work on that. But what we want to do is unite and let this city know that Joshua have organized us up. And we going out with all reddish people to vote, and they were going to get them out to vote. So happy to see you in this. God is so good. Listen, let's, let's put a little money in our plane here. Here's $50. I'm going to have to run. Got a few. But I'm just proud to see you. What that young man that got up and talked while ago? Is he going Yeah. I like him. That, that young man can do it. Because if these young folks out here in the street, all they waiting for are you to give them some attention and give them some leadership. And children, I'm so proud of y'all. Please, organize yourself up in your meeting and get ready to vote. 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 Count. All the things that count. Jesus and voting is the power. God, we ask you right now, we thank you for allowing us to gather here. Thank you for what you've already done and what you're doing now. I ask you to bless this group and then bless the food and bless the offering that we're going to give to support. And we're going to give you praise for it in the name of Jesus, who is Christ the Lord. Amen. Love y'all. Love you. Anything I need to ask Daddy before he goes? Anything? Brother Frank, you got any question for Daddy? Okay, wait. You got a question for Daddy? Okay, got a question for him? Okay, what about you, baby? Okay, real quick, let's talk with the girl first. What you got a question for Daddy? Hi, Grandfather. Uh, we would like to take the time to thank you for all that you do. And also to let you know, here at Gospel Missionary, um, Keeping the 100 Ministry and Vision of Life has teamed up, and we are taking all the kids on the West End. And we're putting him in gospel missionary So When the table is the, the kitty bishop table comes in, we're teaching them the Bible verses, we're teaching them the scriptures, and we're implementing good idea. Our goal is to save our youth on the West End to give them something to do so that they will not be trapped in the situation, but they'll be a part of the solution. And to let you know, we feed them for free, breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, and everything. 
here at Gospel Missionary from Monday through Friday. And whatever's left over, we tend to reach out to see, uh, to see the community. We have good artists that comes out. Our kids have potential. But if we don't pour into their potential, we damage their dream. And the, and the streets take over and become their nightmares. So we need to team up. And right now, we're in the process of renting the Bishop's transportation to take the kids to Holiday World. Because if we get them away from their environment, they become a better product of their own environment. Once we're getting out, these kids have to move on. So we have to push them and lead them. So okay, I think it's 10 o'clock. Let me do this. Now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us for now and forevermore. Amen. Let's let Daddy get on where he's got to go. Now we're in our breakout. Somewhere. Yeah, we see it. There.